Welcome to episode two of the Burnout Expert podcast, where we are diving into if you are confusing sleep deprivation with burnout. Now, I did cover burnout quite a bit in the last episode. The thing, as you saw with burnout, is it is vast. There are so many different, there are so many different symptoms that you can have under that umbrella of what we tailor as being burnout. And quite often, we think that it's the stress in our life that is pushing us into burnout. And 100%. The stress definitely does play a part in many of those symptoms that we spoke of in episode one. Thing is, is that what, when we start looking at sleep, so many of the symptoms overlap that we need to definitely give sleep the credit it deserves. And that's what we're going to dive in today. Where I'm coming from in this today is actually a quote by Dr. Sarah Mednick, a PhD. She wrote a book called Take a Nap, Change Your Life. Depending on how you give your naps depends on how your body body heals and repairs. If you're healing your body, if you're healing your muscles, if you're healing your mind and your creativity, there's so much that can go into it that her book is absolutely fascinating. A couple of things that I did pull out of her book is that heart attack go up in those who slept less than seven hours a night. So seven hours, people who got less than seven hours a night increases their risks of heart attacks. Those with five hours on average had a higher rate of coronary artery artery disease and heart attacks. Their immune system suffers and there's a risk of cancer increases with five hours on average of sleep. Mental health also, there's so many links between mental health with sleeplessness. When we're talking about anger, irritability, anxiousness, depression, there is such a link in between sleep and a lot of what we put under the umbrella as well of mental health issues. So sleep definitely, definitely needs to give the credit it's due. Now, one of the quotes I did take from Sarah Mendick's book is stress and sleep deprivation are pretty much aligned. There is a chance that we are confusing them both. And as I spoke of in the last podcast, I love the using trackers, the specifically the WHOOP or the Aura, the WHOOP band or the Aura ring, O-U-R-A. I love them because they track your sleep at night and a lot of your your they track what is going on in your sleep at night, which I will dive deep into, into this whole season of our podcast episode. Fascinatingly, I do have a group in Whoop for beating burnout. It's called Beat Burnout in the Whoop app. And many of them have said that a lot of their burnout symptoms, not all, they're still having struggles, but they've found huge changes, huge significance in their symptoms, in their moods, in their ability to heal, in their their stats that they get from their whoop, in their strain and recovery scores. When they start focusing on their sleep stats, the other stats start to improve. So we get into as well emotions when we're sleeping. Now this I found to be one of the most fascinating studies on monogamous couples where both parties felt that they had a really good, healthy, stable relationship. What they did was they tested how sleep deprivation affected their relationship. So one person, they they varied it. Some was the, the male, some was the female. I don't know from this study if they did any same-sex couples. They had one of the, 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 the couples did had a regular amount of sleep. The other had two hours less sleep. This is just for one night. This is not on a regular basis. This is solely just one night of one person getting their regular amount of sleep, one person getting two hours less sleep, or people that felt that they were in a couples that felt that they were in a good, healthy relationship. Now, the next day they got to go on a date. 
they had no responsibilities. All of their activities were paid for. They could just go and go on a date of their choice. What happened is that both partners at the end were supposed to rate each other's performance. And both of them rated the performance as below average. There were a little more irritable. They found that they were playing off each other. The one that was sleep deprived was a little more reactive, which then got the other person, you know, on the defensive. And it just became this vicious circle. So we say throughout that date where they didn't enjoy it as much as when they, as they thought that they would have being that they all thought that they came from this good, healthy relationship. They're like, we love going on dates. This is going to be great. That is huge. If we think about this, because we do this all the time, we may stay up late to work or a kid wakes us up, depending on the stage of life you're at. It may be completely out of your control. You may have gotten to bed on time, but a child wakes you up. You may have a shift working partner. You may work shifts yourself. There's so many different things. You may have just gotten into a Netflix show that repeated and repeated and you didn't get to bed on time. You may have been out at an event, a work event or a social event, which is absolutely like we need those things in our life. We need to have social events. It is not going to be possible ever to get in, you know, your total amount of sleeps and you will absolutely have times where you get less than two hours of sleep below your your baseline of what your body needs. The thing from this study that I felt so important and that I do definitely stress when I'm working with my clients is to understand when you have that night to understand that the next day you are going to be shorter. You are not going to be able to handle stressors as well. That's where I bring out this whole toolbox of tools that they can do when they know that something like that has happened. When it's a one-off, we do work on trying to limit the number of times that your body does not get its desired amount of sleep, but living in the real world, that's never going to be possible. And the clients that I work with definitely know what tools to take out the next morning when they know that that's happened, when you've worked a shift, when child woke you up, when you work up, woke up later, you went to bed later than you meant to. The thing is as well is when you're not getting a good quality of sleep, that is where your motivation decreases. You'll probably get less done the next day. Your determination, willpower, and many other human behaviors, they're limited because your cognitive ability decreases. I'll be diving into why that happens in this episode a little bit. Your body and mind, they can't heal. And it's actually more your mind, which I'll explain near the end of this episode as to when you're decreasing in sleep, it actually affects more of your focus, your brain power, your cognitive ability, your short-term memory, your ability to process problems, get creative for projects, all kinds of things that is actually hit first when you have a night without the sleep and your body and mind, it can't repair, regenerate. And it just starts setting off this whole cascade of physical and mental issues. And so sleep is super important because when we're sleeping, it's when our brain heals. It's when our nervous system realigns. Now, what the heck does that have to do with anything? Why does that matter? Your nervous system, you have, I'll just be talking about two branches of it now, is your nerve, your stress and your resting system. When you are stressed so much in your day, your stress nervous system is firing like crazy and your resting nervous system is not kicking in as much as we would like it to. And that starts getting a whole slew of struggles going on in your body. But when you're sleeping, your nervous system starts to heal and repair and realign itself. And when you're decreasing that ability, you're decreasing the ability of what your nervous system is doing in your day to be able to handle stressors. When you're sleeping, your muscles heal. This could be from the day-to-day of your job if you have a job that is physically taxing. So for first responders that I'm working with, they're wearing police can be 25 to 40 pounds of gear. Fire can be a hundred pounds. 
So for every call that they're going to, they're, you're carrying that for at least it's their entire shift. EMS, it depends on what patient or what situation you're in on a call will depend on what the physical needs will be as well on your body. And when we're getting into, if you're doing things, working out, if you're being active, if you're not able to be active, it could be because sleep is not healing your muscles. Your motivation has gone down as well. Your nerves and your organs, that is where they're all regenerating themselves. So we get gallbladder issues. We get gut issues. We have respiratory issues, cholesterol, blood pressure. All of these things are linked with your organs being able to heal and repair while you're sleeping. Your balancing of blood sugars, the amount of blood sugar dysregulation and pre-diabetes or diabetes that I have experienced in working with first responders is, was surprising when I started. I did not believe that that would be affecting them so much. That weight around your middle that you can't lose. Testosterone, we get that a lot. A testosterone or estrogen imbalances Estrogen often steals testosterone. Testosterone is often put into, pulled and converted into cortisol, which is your stress hormone. All of these things are happening and your body balances a lot of these when you're sleeping. You have 50 different hormones that your stress system is in charge of. And most of those heal and repair while you're sleeping. So we have your focus, your, um, as I've said, cholesterol, blood pressure, blood sugars, your body's ability to detox, immune system, short-term memory, cognitive thinking, your healing and repairing of muscles, which is different than your inflammation system as well. Your moods, all of your sexual reproduction, we get cravings, hunger, satiety. It is amazing how many hormones that your body is in charge of, that your stress system is in charge of, And a lot of those heal and repair when you're sleeping. So they work together. If sleep is where your battery recharges, that's going deep into the science, which I'll get into eventually in episodes is that's part of your cortisol, your stress energy hormone, making sure it's doing what it needs to do to repair at night. And you're not pushing it too much in the day, or you're pushing it just at the right levels in the day. Make sure that you're waking up feeling like you have a recharged battery. It's when your body physically and mentally remembers things. So simple things. Let's just think of riding a bike. When you start learning that it's your sleep that gets that, that, that imprints that. So anything you're doing physically, anything you're doing mentally at work, at home, all of these things need to process while you're sleeping. The list really does go on. I can go into this so much, but if you don't sleep well, you really cannot appropriately categorize events. And that's where, when we do get into traumas as well, and this could be, when I'm talking traumas, this could be something at work where you are struggling with one of your colleagues and, or you're reprimanded for something at work that maybe wasn't yours, or your team is getting into trouble for something that was actually another team's responsibility. There's so many things like these don't have to be the big traumas that in the first responder world that we do think of that happen on calls. These can be a lot of things that happen off of calls. When you don't sleep, your body can't categorize those events. So those start becoming traumas instead of your body processing them. An argument with a spouse, it could be an argument with a family member or um, so many different things could be happening that if you're not appropriately categorizing those in your sleep, they do become traumas and they all add up big T, little T. Those are all the little T's that add up over time. So depriving yourself of two hours of sleep, we've already showed in that study done with the couples. There's other studies done as well on the, on your performance and the performance can mimic, it can leads to a performance that we would see or that would be on par with somebody who has a blood alcohol level of 0.05%. So that's just one night of two hours of sleep. So if this person though is deprived of two hours of sleep for 11 nights in a row, that was another study where they did 11 nights of two hours of sleep, their performance declined compared to what their adapted self was. So they did tests on what when they were, when they had the regular amount of sleep. And then when you did these tests on these 
individual after 11 nights of only getting two hours of sleep, they were on par with the, 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 the results they showed were completely on par with somebody who has a blood alcohol level of about 0.08 to 0.1. And this was a study that was mentioned by Dr. Kirk Parsley, who is a doctor who works with military and first responders. And he said that being drunk doesn't correlate with knowing you are drunk. So when you don't have the sleep, we think we're fine. We do, we hop in a car. I know for me being the wife of an officer, anytime my husband does night shift, I'm grateful that where we live, he can take a subway home. And so he's not driving after a long night shift where he is sleep deprived and, and he is fully functional, not fully functional necessarily behind the wheel. I'm always worried about that. There's a video that I actually have linked in the show notes here. I highly recommend you look at this. It is fascinating. It is where they take a driver who has been sleep deprived for three days and they let him drive around for two hours of sleep. This, this driver ended up having 25 minutes of micro sleeps during that two hour drive. He thought he was fine when he found out he had 25 minutes of falling asleep in a two hour timeline after three days of sleep deprivation. He was blown away. This video is amazing. I highly recommend that you go to the show notes in this podcast and, and check that out, but it is really showing you how sleep deprivation does affect you. A sleepy, stressed out brain, it can decrease your productivity by 30% when six hours of sleep is your norm. So if you just get six hours of sleep most nights, that can decrease your productivity by 30%. So if you feel that you are either getting a lot done, imagine what you could get done. Or if you feel like your to-do list is never getting done, you're spinning your wheels, things are taking you longer than you should, like quite often at home, in the office, you're, you know, working on projects and trying to, having to reread things a couple of times, that can be explained by that productivity decrease of when you're getting just six hours of sleep on the norm. Now, if we look into chronic sleep deprivation, there is an actual definition of chronic sleep deprivation. The definition, the medical definition is when a sleep has less than seven to nine hours that persists for three months or longer. So any of you who have kids, the odds are sleep deprivation kicks in with a mom. When, when somebody has a baby, quite often we're like, oh, you're just supposed to be tired after your baby and a lot of the signs and symptoms, but it is actually sleep deprivation. And that's where starting to look into this, like looking into couples as soon as they have a child in the first year, there's so many things that we can be doing in order to help. Yes, you're not getting the sleep. The baby is demanding your attention. Completely understand that. But there's other things that you can be doing in order to help your sleep outside of that time. So I have a question for all of you that are listening is, how many hours on average do you get a night? How many of hours do you get when you're sleeping? If you have a health tracker, you probably know because you're tracking it and it, you get your data every single morning. If it's a whoop band or an aura ring, the Apple watch as well will tell you about your sleep. A lot of the other watches, some of them do. I know there's the odd Garmin that does, but the data is not hundred percent accurate. Well, none of it is. It's as consistent, it's more consistent with a whoop and an aura. But the data that you're getting from those as well, it's it's at least giving you some sort of a baseline. But you know, like, are you getting a solid seven to eight hours where you wake up with energy? This is where you fall asleep easily, you stay asleep, maybe wake up to pee, but go right back to sleep, and you are waking up with energy. Are you getting that? Because if you're not, the odds are you are sleep deprived. And if you're listening to this podcast, if it's on burnout, so you're most likely feeling a lot of burnout symptoms. Now, if you are struggling with your sleep, if you have dried everything that you can think of and everything that you can find, I can definitely help you with that. But if you, if you haven't, 
tried all of the things that are out there. There's so many things in order to try to improve your sleep. Trying even one or two of them can make a huge difference on your sleep. So I'd highly encourage any of you who have not yet, who are seeing how important sleep is. And if you have, don't be frustrated. There's many, many reasons as to why people who have tried all of the things and it hasn't worked for you, you're still struggling to fall asleep or you're waking mid-sleep. That could be a lot of long-term stress effects on your body that your body needs to heal from first in order for all of those sleep hacks to then start working. So, but I'd highly encourage if you have not tried sleep hacks yet, try some, see where they lead you. You may not need to work with me if your sleep gets back on track. A lot of your symptoms may, may improve and you may not need to work with me in order to dive into those. Sleep can make a huge difference in getting your family back on track. I was so short with my husband when I was in burnout. Oh, I'm short with my kids, disengaged with them, just sit on the couch, didn't want to do things and put them in front of the TV, and didn't have the energy or the brain power to deal with them. One of my big problems was sleep. I was one of those that I had great sleep habits, but I still couldn't sleep because of deep stress issues in my body. And once I got those back on track, I was able to sleep again. And, and I, I became my, I got my family back. And it just made such a big difference. So sleep debt, let's dive a little bit into sleep debt. So let's say you have been getting less than the seven to nine hours of sleep, typically eight, like we need about seven and a half to eight hours of sleep. Sleep is basically, it's like spending money. Eventually you do have to pay it back. So sleep, we have just this certain amount in our bank and every time we sleep, we keep topping up our bank with the sleep. So you have to keep paying it back with sleep in order to keep yourself, your bank account going up. And when you're getting six hours of sleep, you are getting a sleep debt of about two hours. If you're getting four to five hours of sleep, which many first responders that I work with, that's their average, you're losing three to four hours. And of that like ability to be healing and repairing your body and your mind physically and mentally. And for a first responder, that can mean the difference between life or death decision. So in our everyday life, and it can mean the difference between relationships, how relationships are working at home, getting along with your family and just being happy in life and enjoying your job. So sleep deprivation, when we're looking at it as far as relationships, it's not even just relationships at home. These could be relationships on the job with administration, with your colleagues, your peers, how you handle all of those, those, those relationships. You may find that, you know, somebody's always getting on your nerves. Whereas if you actually, if you have a great, great sleep and your sleep debt is paid off, they're not bothering you as much anymore. The things that they're doing aren't irking you. You may find that just so many relationships are so much easier. Things roll off your back so much more. You're not as, you don't need to control things as much when you are sleep deprived, when you are in burnout, there's that need to control things. I know even just for my husband, it was how the dishwasher was done, how the laundry was folded. All of those little tiny things don't even bother me anymore. I'm just grateful that he's doing it and helping out. And I don't have to be the one that's doing it. My husband's amazing, does a lot a lot around the house, but I wasn't as grateful for it before. Instead, I would nitpick him because I was in control and I was exhausted and sleep deprived. So when sleep deprivation occurs, we may experience things where we're thinking that we're pushing hard. We may think that we are going into work and we're pushing hard every day. And you may be, but others are seeing that you're actually, you, your work ethic, your work quality may be decreasing. They may not be seeing that. Uh, promotions. You may be getting passed up for promotions. But we've, I've seen this so much, so much in the first responder world that I'd have responders coming in and struggling to make it through promotions. But once we got their sleep back on track, once their energy, their moods, they were able to really put in so much more effort and they were a lot calmer and they saw after how their 
interactions were with colleagues versus once they started sleeping more and they started getting promoted. Quite often too, you stop working on projects that had meaning to you. You don't get that love, that drive for things anymore. You start planning less and less with your kids, with your spouse at home. Date nights become a thing of the past because you're just so exhausted. You don't have anything left in you to go out on a date. And you may start working more. Some people start working more and start avoiding being at home because that's where a lot of the friction really starts and work becomes people's escape from a lot of things, not just what happens from sleep deprivation, but a lot of struggles that we're also going through as well on our own, we may start working more just to avoid being at home. So we've talked all about sleep deprivation. Now you understand how important sleep is and what a large part it plays in all of these symptoms of burnout. So let's talk about what you can control. Now you can control your sleep quality. You can control how much sleep debt you're having. I want to put a disclaimer on that because some of you may have tried all the things and are still struggling with your sleep. So, but there's, you still can work on that. I can absolutely help you with that. The sleep quality we, there's still things that we can do. So starting to take a step back and look at what can you control in your sleep. And this is where I love, love looking at the data from my clients who do have a whoop band or an aura ring. So with the whoop band or the aura ring, it will show me their sleep cycles. There are things that you may be trying that may give you five minutes more of deep sleep or five minutes more of REM sleep. And the thing is, is you still feel like crap in the morning because it's not enough for your body to have healed and repaired. You're not really not enough to pay back all of your sleep debt and all of that, that you may stop doing that hack, that tool. You may stop, stop doing that, that sleep habit not realizing that it was benefiting you, it was just slowly compounding over time, that it might be five minutes for the first week, and then it might start going up to 10. That I find when we have the data to be looking at of your sleeps, we can see really what is working and what isn't working. So we can see as well, how much did that Netflix series staying up late to watch that as much as it was relaxing and it was your time and it was and you, you got you know, maybe the kids were in bed, your spouse was in bed, it was you time, you will see how much did that impact your deep or your REM sleep or your quality of your sleep. And we can see that with the whoop or the aura band, the whoop band or the aura ring. We can see that. And when you're looking at this, it really helps you make the decisions. It may be absolutely worth it for you to decrease your amount of sleep in order to get that alone time away from absolutely everybody. It may be. And it may be that you're looking at it and you're like, mm, I think that sleep is my priority right now. Once my sleep gets back on track, I'll do this maybe once or twice a week. And then I'll have five really good sleeps and two that I do incur sleep debt. Like these are all choices. You have control over all of this as to what you want to do, how much you want to do, how you're going to do it. You have total control in all of this, but looking at your stats really does help you figure out where to be. So let's just look at if you do have a tracker. Now, if we're looking at, I know the, the Apple Watch, there are four sleep stages. You have your active, your awake time, then you have light sleep, deep sleep, or also known as slow wave sleep, and your REM. Now, with those the Apple Watch mixes, combines deep and REM sleep. I believe it has light sleep, but don't quote me on it. So you can still get some information from it. The Whoop and Aura definitely dive into these like deeply. And I actually am using Slide Deck as I'm recording this. So I will put the Slide Deck below and you can quickly go through the Slide Deck and see because I do have slides of all the data that this is collecting as I'm going through this. 
when we're looking at this as well, when you're looking at, I know I've looked at somebody's Garmin recently and with their Garmin, it just showed sleep. I believe it may have given just what it said was deep, but I was struggling to figure out what it exactly was. But at the same time, if you're doing any habits and you find that that is increasing, then um, on your health tracker, then know that you're on the right track. If you find that that number is decreasing, then you know that what you're doing is inhibiting your sleep quality. So you won't get as deep of metrics from the whoop or from anything other than whoop and aura. But that being said, if you have a tracker, stick with it, stick with it for sure. Get as much as you, as you can out of the data from your tracker before you even decide if you want to invest in a whoop or an aura ring. So let's dive into these stages. So stage one and two is your light sleep. The first stage of stage one of light sleep is just that quick part at the start of your sleep. So that just happens once. But stage two is actually more than half of the time of your sleep. It should be about 50% of your sleep. And stage two is it increases your alertness a little bit when you're awake. So stage two light sleep is super important. It's when your parts of your brain relax and it's where you start kind of healing and repairing a lot of your breathing, your heart rate, your reflex response, your speech, language, abstract reasoning, planning, problem solving, social interactions. And it can actually override certain autonomic responses for newly learned ones. So for example, snoring, there's one thing that I, I do work on with people is snoring in their sleep. And that dives into part of your nervous system, part of your stress system and all of that. And you have an automatic response. Not, not everyone snoring, but many of those that I work with who snore it quite often, it is an automatic response of your body switching into your stress state while you're sleeping. And so we can override that in that light sleep if we start working on certain modalities and, and certain tools and tips as I'm working with you. The light sleep is really, really important. It doesn't actually get a lot of credit as much as, as it does deserve. Deep sleep or your slow wave sleep. This is where your body. So I, I think of the deep as being your body healing. It's where growth hormone is released. Deep is where like after a workout or just through your day-to-day -day of your body, it's where your healing inflammation system is, is working. So for chronic flus and allergies and all of these things are healing in your deep sleep. Everything that's physical is, is deep body restorative healing and repairing is that deep sleep. Deep should be about 20% of your total sleep time and deep takes up the first two thirds of your sleep. So usually the first two thirds is that deep, deep healing and repairing. REM sleep is the last two thirds. So if you recall me talking about how your brain focus, thinking, cognitive, memory processing, ability to be creative and project planning, how that can decrease more with sleep deprivation than the body healing stuff. That is because the last two thirds of your sleep is REM usually. And so you want, if you decrease your sleep by a couple of hours, you're usually decreasing more REM sleep than you are of deep sleep. So deep is that mind sleeping and about 90 minutes is a really good REM sleep for somebody who's getting about eight hours. It averages about 20 to 25% of your sleep time. Latency is another one that the whoop and the aura track, and that's how long it takes you to fall asleep. Now you want it to be between five and 20 minutes. That's good. If you're under five minutes, if you're really, really fast or you're over 20 minutes, that is often a sign that you're sleep deprived, where your mind can't shut off. Your body isn't getting into, isn't able to turn off, or you just conk out really, really fast. Quite often, those are signs of sleep deprivation. So the whoop and the aura are amazing. They have different alarms and trackers too, where they will let you know when you should be going to bed. Sometimes mine will tell me 7.45 to 8.45 is my bedtime. And in order for me, for when my body normally wakes up to get 
to get enough sleep and to pay back my sleep debt. The consequences of not getting enough deep or REM sleep is that your body or mind can't heal, can't stay strong throughout your career. You increase mistakes on the job for, you can increase mood irregularities, decrease memory. These are all symptoms that we relate with burnout. And when we're talking about first responders, I was, I don't even know what the word is, taken aback, I guess, when I had quite a few, I, I continue to this day, I have quite a few where responders will come in to work with me, to work on their sleep, to work on getting their energy up, their moods, and being able to figure out how to sleep on all of their crazy shifts with all that's thrown at them. And some of them have said to me after we got their sleep back on track, they're like, my suicidal thoughts are gone. Now, had I known that any of them had gotten to that point, I would have definitely been referring them to people who can help them with the suicidal thoughts. But this has been really eye-opening for me as well. There is a Lieutenant Colonel Dave Grossman. He's very well known, a former military police officer who psychologist, he's been a psychologist for, oh gosh, I think he's in his seventies now, like 40 years. He's been a psychologist and he has dove into PTSD and into traumas. He has recently switched his focus on sleep deprivation because he has found links in a lot of his studies. And I've found studies as well on this, that sleep deprivation does increase risk of ethical mistakes and suicides. And that is actually one of the reasons why I started working with first responders is suicide rates were three times that of line of duty deaths in the United States the year that I started helping. And it is amazing how sleep can really, really, really affect somebody's mental health. And it really needs to take, to get the credit that it does deserve. So that was a lot <laughs> that was heavy today. I think next week is waking mid sleep. And then the week after I might have tired and wired where you can't fall asleep. We'll dive into those in the next two episodes, but I really needed you to understand how big of a role sleep plays in burnout. We, we quite often think it's stress, 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 which stress definitely is a big part of it. And we'll be getting into a lot of that as well, more in this season of the burnout expert podcast. But I do want you to understand how large of a role sleep does play. So your action steps for this episode, I would like, if you can, if you have a tracker, start looking at your deep and REM sleep patterns. Are you filling in a little more of those first two thirds of deep, last two thirds of REM? Are you getting 20% of deep, 20 to 25% of REM on average? What you will find if you're paying back sleep debt though, is deep may take over and may take over most of the sleep. So your REM will be very low and your deep will be increased for a while until sleep debt's paid off. So I'd like you to look at your deep and REM sleep patterns. Start looking at what percentage of deep and REM do you get at night? How many times are you waking in your sleep? You may find your, you'll get a graph. If anybody is watching this video, the screen, you'll see any of this white that's at the top of this graph. That's the amount of times that this is mine that I had woken up. It could be, I have a cat that I sleep with. So sometimes it's just me rolling over. I don't even notice, but it's my body actually getting even out of that light stage into that wake stage. And let us know, post your answers, comment under this podcast episode, and let us know what you think. Now, I am opening this up now to anybody who does have questions. I did not do a good job this week of getting out the times of when I am going to be on here. If you hop onto my email address, I will let you know. It's going to be most Thursdays at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. There might be the odd changes some week. So definitely get onto our mailing list. The 
link to get on our mailing list is in the show notes. That's where I will send it out to let you guys know when I'm here, I will answer questions. You can hop on with me right now and show me your whoop or your aura ring data. If you have another app, if you can, before the call, get it onto your laptop or wherever you're doing your zoom call with me. But if you hop on, you can share your screen with me and I can actually see your data and, we, and you can ask me your questions, ask me them based on what we're talking about with your sleep and we can dive in and I can personalize things for you. That's where the magic happens. And that's where I really like with this podcast is to get where we do have some questions at the end happening. It's not just me on here talking all of the time. It also is easier for me to have a conversation when I know other people are listening instead of just speaking to. So definitely go to that link in the show notes so that you can uh, find out when I am recording and you can hop on. I am purposefully putting a screen, like sharing my screen on this because that is all that I will be reporting. I will not be recording people's faces. So nobody will know who it is that's speaking. I will not say names to keep it anonymous, especially for those of you that need to for your job. So that is it for today's episode. I am posting this episode in my 911 Shift Ready podcast for this season. At the end of the season, we will be moving completely just over to the one podcast, the Burnout Expert podcast, as that's what I do, where I thrive, and I can be working with everyone. It's really great for the responders to be seeing as well that that a lot of the stressors as well definitely do happen on the job, but a lot of these things are happening in the home, in your family as well. And there's a lot of things when I'm working with responders that we're working with in their day-to-day life and that have such an important role in, in improving their sleep, decreasing their burnout, getting their stress on board. So I'd like to really marry both of those together. If anybody would like to work with me, you can email me, Andy, A-N-D-I, at 911lifestyle.com and ask me. I am currently taking some one-on-one clients. I have some availability Tuesday and Thursday. I have a Thursday, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time spot, and I have a Tuesday, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time spot available in my calendar. If any of those work for you, you'd like to talk to me about working one-on-one, let me know. And this is a new podcast episode. Please definitely go on to, even if you don't listen on Apple, click the link for the Apple. I'll put it down below. Click the link for the Apple podcast and go in and give it five-star rating would be great. Give it a quick review so that this podcast will be shown to more people. The more Apple podcast rankings that we do get, the more this podcast is shown everywhere. All right. Hopefully you enjoyed this podcast. Let me know what questions you have, and I will see you in the next episode.